Good morning. This is our daily devotion for Monday, the 6th of July. My name's Pam Hackinson. Well, although the lockdown is being relaxed, I think that those of us who have been out only when necessary are still being very careful and we know that the pandemic has not gone away. So I hope that a great comfort to all of us is that no matter what is going on in the world, God is in control. Whenever we are going through times of trouble and distress, we need to remember this, but particularly at this time. When God sent his son, Jesus, to be our saviour, this was part of his plan, so that as Jesus grew up and began his ministry, he could point to this fact that even though he could teach and preach and heal, he could only do this through his Father God, who was giving him the strength to do this through prayer. At the beginning of his ministry, even when he was in the wilderness, Jesus, God's son, showed that whatever he had to face, God was in control. And throughout his ministry, Jesus told parables or stories so that his hearers could know what the kingdom of God is like. He couldn't really describe it because it is not a physical kingdom above the clouds, but a spiritual kingdom over which God reigns as king. We are blessed that we, as Christian people, are charged with showing others what the kingdom will look like under God. These parables that Jesus told were, in the main, very understandable to his hearers and told in a context that they could understand. Sometimes Jesus gave an explanation of the meaning if he thought the listeners had not understood, but usually they were just told as stories. We may, we may have heard them so often that we think we know what they are saying, but sometimes we can miss the real meaning because they are so familiar. We need to see what Jesus is really talking about. What do we really need to see in these simple parables of Jesus about the kingdom of God? And what can we learn from them about our own lives? During the lockdown, I said that I was going to make my garden look lovely. As if I had to sit in it, instead of going out, I would have something beautiful to look at. As the garden centres were closed, I ordered some small plants in multipots and planted them out when they were delivered. But then, much later on, my friend sent a packet of seeds through the post. They were supposed to attract bees, so I sprinkled, sprinkled them in a couple of pots, not really expecting very much. But I could be, couldn't believe how quickly they have grown out and I can't wait to see what flowers come on them. I recognise some of them but not others. So this reading made me identify with the farmer. So let's have a look at this parable I have chosen today which is Mark 4 verses 26 to 29. He also said this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seeds sprout and grow, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces corn. First the stalk, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. As soon as the corn is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. So what is this parable about? Well, Mark tells us that the farmer scattered the seed just like I did in my pots. So he didn't plant them carefully. But then he didn't do much else. He just goes to sleep and gets up again and doesn't worry about the seed. Jesus says the seed sprouts and grows, but he does not know how. To be honest, I'm sure that some scientists could give us an explanation of how the seeds germinate, but I do not know how either. A dry seed that looks really dead can grow into a beautiful plant. And right at the, the end, the farmer harvests what he has grown, but he isn't really interested how this came to happen. In the story, it doesn't mention about him preparing the ground or watering the seeds, but they still grow. I think this is again showing us that whatever is happening in our lives, God is still in control. We sleep and we get up and we go about our lives just as the seeds sprout and grow. This is God's kingdom. We know that he is Lord over all. 
And when we hit difficult times in our lives, or we see others around us suffering, or when we are facing times of change like now, something that we never thought so many people all the, over the world would have to face. We want to make it right. We want everything to be back to normal again. But you and I know that often in life, we can't fix things. But just because we can't fix a situation, it doesn't mean that it is out of control. It just means that it's out of our control. But it certainly isn't out of God's control. Sometimes we may feel that we are completely powerless in life and can't see how to make a difference. We may, feel, we may feel that the best we can do is sleep and get up and we have nothing else to offer. And you know, that's okay. Our inability to control does not mean that the kingdom of God is not present. It is present still, sprouting and growing without any help from me or you. Because, as I've said before, God is in control. Sometimes I feel that I am not helping God grow his kingdom. If only I was more loving, or more kind, or more compassionate, then I could help the kingdom grow. And I could help it grow in the lives of others. But God knows what is in our hearts. He knows what we are doing in his name. So whatever small seeds of faith, we have, God can use them. The thing is, we are all weak and we will all fail sometimes, but our feelings will, failings will not stop the kingdom of God coming because God is in control. God rules over our lives. Because he sent his son, our Lord Jesus, to live among us, he knows how we feel and he knows all our emotions. We have nothing to fear, nothing to worry about, nothing to feel guilty about. While going through this pandemic, we may wonder where it will all end. I was speaking on the phone to someone the other day and she asked me if this might be the end of the world. I said I don't think so, as the world has gone through serious situations before. But only God knows when that time will come, because that is his plan. He is in control. In verse 29, Jesus says, As soon as the corn is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. The farmer doesn't harvest because he has understood how the crops have grown. But when the corn is ripe, he just goes and harvests the crop. The seed has been sown and has been grown for one thing, the harvest. And the kingdom of God, that all-powerful rule of God, has been sown in our lives and has grown in our lives and when the crop ripens it will be harvested. Sometimes life can be cruel and we may, we may feel we have been given a raw deal. God is not saying that we will never have pain and upset. What he tells us in 1 Corinthians 10 13 is that he will never let us be tested more than we can bear. But what God also promises is that all the pain, all the hurt, all the joys and all the blessings will one day be brought together for, for our good and that is the harvest of his kingdom and we will experience it one day because God is in control. And now let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that this morning we will know that you are with us and that you have total control over our lives so that whatever is happening in the world, however concerned and anxious we are about the pandemic, we know that because you have control over our lives, we have nothing to fear. We do pray for all the families of the people who have passed away during this pandemic. All those people who haven't been able to be near their loved ones at their passing. All those people who have not been able to be with their families. And even though the lockdown is being relaxed, we know that many people have still not seen their families 
for a long, long time. So we pray that you will be with each and every one of us this morning and give us the peace, your peace, that passes all understanding. And just let us know that you are here with us, each and every one. And we ask these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen.